life. I ain't getting out of bed today. I keep waking up from the previous night. Hello, fellow writers. Um, with NaNoWriMo approaching and the fact that we'll all be writing our brains out throughout the month of November, I thought I would um, customize Scrivener from the default kind of bright white layout to uh, sort of a night theme and also incorporate my three-act structure, uh, sort of a compilation of different other YouTubers, which I'll share, and then kind of create this broad template so that I can just go in there and start writing and it's or already organized um, and then I, I thought I'd explain that and sort of show you how to customize it yourself as well as share the files needed to do this so so start by clicking on the link below it'll take you to my uh, Google uh, Drive where uh, you download the zip file and I already went ahead and did this and extracted the files to my desktop on uh, this template and these prep files and these JPEGs are all you're going to need. So, go back to, new to Scrivener. And the first thing you're going to want to do is go to Tools and Options and load these uh, prep files. You do that by um, General, Manage, Load Preferences. And then we're going to take this file, apply it, and then there you go. So instantly you can see... I made a lot of changes, but we're not quite done yet. So next thing we want to do is a new project. And then to load the template, you're going to go um, down to new project and then options, import templates. And again, I put this on my desktop just to make it easy. And once this comes in, we're going to have to now create a project. We'll just create demo two. I don't know on the desktop and when we load this up we can see now um, you know really a lot of changes so there's a few things you're gonna have to do to complete the process and what I did and it's mainly if you know anything about uh, Scrivener and the corkboard view and we'll go over it um, this is what I'm using the JPEG files for and I tend to put mine on like a OneDrive or something like that so if I go from laptop to desktop it's there so what you have to do is you have to go back to tools and options and we're going to go to first corkboard okay and you can see it's looking for the custom background but it doesn't know where to find it so if we select custom background again this time I'm actually going to go to uh, my OneDrive okay because I have these things here and I'm going to pick dark uh, dark chord 2 alright click, click apply and the other place we need to go is appearance and we're going to go to full screen background and we're going to choose a texture and we're going to go back to that same well mine's one drive but you can put yours wherever you like and I'm also going to, also going to pick the same file the difference between um, two and three is that uh, three is smaller so depending on if you're on a laptop or whatever resolution you're on it might look different might look better for you and uh, the original is just standard colors. I modified it a bit in Photoshop. So we're going to apply that. Hit OK. And then if we go to back to our corkboard view, you'll see that we now have a little bit of a darker, a little grayer uh, corkboard. And I tend to like that better because it's easier on the eyes. So some other things you're going to want to check. Uh, to make this work if it doesn't look the same is you're going to want to go to view okay and you're going to want to use at colors and check all of these things so if none of them are checked or some of them are checked you're going to want to use all of them so my um, Windows 10 I, I have this also as gray so it doesn't look so bright and what you'll notice is I got rid of the main toolbar we're going to turn that back on just for demonstration purposes, but you see how much this adds. This is really bright, and it's kind of really distracting. I'm going to click up to my, click on manuscript so I can see everything. And I'm just going to show you a couple different options that is kind of built into this thing. If we click on Inspector, and you can get there two ways. You can get there, um, you know, by clicking this little button here. Or by going back to View and uh, layout and then click an inspector either way either works 
Um, you know, while you're on the view, also go under corkboard options. Just make sure keyword colors is also um, highlighted. If that's not checked, check that. So now up in manuscript view, we're only seeing project notes, but the second we start clicking on these um, on these folders here, you're going to see there's a certain amount of information uh, in them already. And I'm going to give credit to um, the YouTuber who um, I sort of took this from, really, and implemented into the template. The links are below to her channel, uh, Katie Tastic, or I think I'm pronouncing that right, but she's really got a couple of really good videos on outline, and I'll credit her for sure below. But if you keep expanding these things, you'll see that as you click along, each one of these really has a certain amount of information to help somebody who may not ordinarily know how to outline, outline and have a little cheat sheet as well. And I do that by either having the inspector open. So, for example, if I'm in Act 1 and, you know, I'm looking at these things and I'm about to start writing, you know, I always have a point of reference as to, you know, what's really going on in Act 1 and, and what I really need to be covering. And then, you know, uh, some of these things I break out by, you know, what's actually supposed to happen. So what happens in the meeting and, you know, I have that here in the inspector. And then for my scenes... I color the scenes depending on really what draft I'm, you know, I'm in. And how I did this, I'll, I'll show in a minute, but you could basically see that the lightest one is my first draft. And then kind of the mid-gray one is, you know, the revised. So I'm, you know, I'm kind of doing the editing in there and, you know, spell checking and grammar and all that other stuff. And, you know, when I'm done with this thing and I, I know I don't want to, I don't need to look at it anymore. It's ready for an editor. Um, that's really when it's going to be the, the darkest gray, so I know I, I don't really have to look at that anymore. So I'm going to collapse this for a second, and then you'll notice here uh, you have this split screen view. So the alternative way to look at this is to turn the inspector off, and then turn this on, and you'll see now you can highlight each window. So you, you kind of splitting it down the middle. If I highlight this window, and I get it on manuscript. You kind of see I get the same thing, but, you know, more in this folder view that I'm, I'm accustomed to. So as I break these things apart, it's really nice because, you know, I can see everywhere I am, you know, at any given time in its own window, you know, with the cheat sheet notes and all of those things. So the idea behind um, any of this, I'm going to turn this off for now and bring the inspector on is that, you know, again, it's it's really like a cheat sheet if you're a new writer or, you know, you're just trying to plan everything out. And as you're going along, you know, you're really kind of changing, you know, these these cheat sheets. You know, you're putting, you know, what your scenes are, what's going on, you know, in your book. So what I did is I figured, you know, once you get halfway through changing this thing, you might get lost or forget or forget your, you know, your cheat notes or, you know, what am I supposed to be doing in this scene or whatever? So I copied it all the way down here to outline formats. And this is, you know, pretty much the same thing. It's duplicate. And what this does is you're not modifying it here. And this isn't going to show up, you know, when you compile. So you can always go back to this. If you had changed all these folder names and you changed everything about it, you can go back here and take a look and go, oh, man, what's, you know, inciting incident, for example. And it's going to be there for you. So these folders, each one of them, they're set up with this checkbox to um, not include it in the compile. So you don't want all these things, you know, showing up when you compile your book and all these other, you know, line breaks and all that kind of stuff. That's that's really not what you need. I'm going to go through just really briefly how I color coded these so you can add if you want and you can change it. You know, some people don't do chapter one, two, and three, or what have you. Some people just do scenes. And the way that's done is when you have the inspector open, that's the fastest way I know how to get there. Is you're going to go here and you're going to edit it. Okay. So there's a couple really important things they hide in here. One is the labels, and this is what we're talking about. So I made these myself. And, you know, they're pretty easy. You hit plus and you can add whatever you want. Scene, you know, complete. I don't know. 
right? And then when you double click the actual color, you can make this any bright color you want, anything you want. The only thing I notice is that the these things kind of get screwed up. It seems to want to go to the first tile, so I just move it out of there. But you want to make this thing bright yellow and then add it to custom colors, you can do that. And then all it really takes in here is changing it just like that. And now there you go. So we're going to change that back so it doesn't drive me crazy. Okay, good. Well, you see how easy it is to kind of make your own. I took that checkbox off for compile. You see how easy it is to kind of make your own colors and, you know, really make this the way you want it and the way your workflow works. And I'll go into outlying in, in, in another video, probably my next one. But this is really just customizing it. And, uh, you know, they don't include a nighttime mode. And for someone like me, if I'm writing at night, I mean, that's way too bright. And I even went as far as to um, customize the nighttime mode, or the, I'm sorry, the full screen mode. And in here, you know, if you turn this up, you can see I got that cork board. We did that earlier in the video. And now I can just write, you know, I'm on a, got a nice cork board background or whatever I might want. And I can go in here and you can see the font is, it's not quite a bright yellow, but it, it's easy enough where you can see it, but against the the great uh, background you know it's just easier on the eyes so I'm gonna escape out of that and I'm gonna go back into some things you're gonna need to change so in this edit view and again I'm sure there's another way to get there but I, I can't find it in the project properties you're gonna wanna change these things obviously you're not gonna want my name there you can't have no name there so it kinda just keeps whatever you put there so you'll change that okay so I think we can put I don't know and a for now and save that and th and that'll keep that'll stay that's just an area of attention you want to go back into tools options and the first thing you're going to want to change and, and you know unless you want to have your name be mine is you're going to want to change this to whatever path you want your scratch pad notes saved to and even more important than that in the backup you'll see i have this uh scrivener backups and that's not going to work if it doesn't exist. So you're going to change both of those things and hit OK. We'll go through just, you know, real quick um, some of these options. You know, what I did change. This is really where I did the, you know, the most of the work. Just going through each one of these things and identifying what color I wanted. And, you know, the editor is in the middle and, you know, changing the text color. You can see it's, it's a yellow, but it's not like a neon yellow. Then the index cards, this is sort of how they show up and dividers and all that. I, I, I went through all these kinds of things to make them, you know, really match this uh, this gray cork board because I didn't like the default one. It was, I don't know, too, too bright for me. And then cork board view, there's not much here, but uh, I didn't really mess around with any of these. I just changed the background and the opacity a little bit, no big deal. And the editor... So, I mean, you can go in this and really make it, you know, the way you want it. I'm going to go back and take this main toolbar off because it's irritating. But hopefully this helps. You know, hopefully this is a little bit of a nicer view if you're writing at night like me. And, you know, half the times at night I don't have uh, the brightness turned all the way up on my laptop. So, um, you know, it looks a little bit, it's even softer on the eyes than that. I have these files linked below. I will have credit to um, the two YouTubers where uh, influenced me heavily and, and uh, you know, in the one circumstance, I actually took word for word, um, you know, her outlining process. So I'll credit her there. Now, if you decide you don't like this view or any other and you want to get back to default Scrivener, it's not hard to do, but you have to understand sort of a little bit what's going on. So when you import a template or you just create one, it puts it in this uh, in your app data folder, okay, right here. So I'm going to delete both of these. So you see that's empty now. I'm going to close Scrivener. Okay, it's going to error out because of that backup. Fire up Scrivener again. You see, it's it's still retaining those those changes. So easiest thing to do is go to Tools. 
And then you're going to start hitting defaults to all these things. Tools, defaults. But you see it's still retaining some of these things here. And that's because of the template. So you'll go to File, New Project. Okay. And let's go to Fiction. And let's type uh, Template. Okay. And we're back. We're back to standard template. So if we want to keep this uh, vanilla view now, we can just go back to File, Save as Template, and it's going to go back to that. You see that path is the same. We'll just call this Novel. Okay, we'll close everything out. Close this guy out. Fire up Scrivener again. Now it's retained that last project that I worked on because that's what it does. So we go to Recent Projects, Templates, and then we'll see now, uh, you just save this and it'll, it, it'll basically retain this. Um, hopefully this was useful. I know it went a little long, but, uh, thanks for viewing and good luck in your outlines.